The root cause of these so-called hallucinations is often related to the, the two limitations that I mentioned of recency, the lack of you know, recent data for these models, and also accuracy. There are ways for addressing some of those issues and there's a nascent field in the news industry, which is computational journalism, which is merging uh, techniques of artificial intelligence and machine learning with editorial best practices. The question is, how do we address these accuracies? How do we fact check the machine if they are producing information at scale? Well, when it comes to applying language models, if you are a news organization you are applying a language model to your news gathering process, there are a few things that, that are being done. One is the technique which is called fine tuning, which is we take pre-trained large language model and we expose that model to news data, for example articles about a particular subject such as climate or, or the environment. And so what that allows us to do is emulate the writing style and have a little better grasp of the language that appears in those types of coverage areas, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee better accuracy for those topics. And the reason for that is that LLMs recognize the statistical relationship. So what's the likelihood of a certain string of words appearing in this sentence? And they don't necessarily understand the word meaning, and perhaps that's uh, the, the Guardian story that you alluded to. That's where it stems from. But... There are promising solutions, and one of them is the field called uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation, uh, for short, RAG. And so it's a new approach for, in simple words, to connect a large language model to a reliable database of fact-checked information. And so rather than relying on this language model to do both the research and the articulation uh, and the writing of the story, we instead rely on these external databases for facts. And the LLM's role is simply to translate that data into coherent language. This, you, know, you could imagine this methodology being applied for real-time news coverage where for example, we were talking about government agencies at, as it relates to health services and so on, who are collecting data on you know, public health data or the spread of COVID and so on. And so connecting those databases that are accurate and factual with the LLM, that's, there's um, you know, a lot of potential. And then the last thing that I'd like to highlight is usually the, or often the news sector in journalism is in the context of AI, is regarded as a spectator. But I believe journalists have an active role to play in the development of AI. Not only there's a wealth of data that everyone wants to train these models, but they also possess the sort of the ethical frameworks and the uh, fact-checking workflows to implement them into the model. And so what that means is that rather than simply training the models on news data to teach a machine how to write, we can also teach the machine editorial principles. And so this is the concept of editorial AI or constitutional AI where we have the machine abide by a set of principles that are defined by journalists.